Good morning. I am Bishop Skip Adams, uh, retired, and uh, good to see all of you gathered here this day. For everyone out in uh, virtual land, welcome, and uh, trust that you can follow us uh, along on the screen, as well as all of you here, the screens on the side or in the uh, leaflet that you got when you came in. Um, I want to encourage the folks out there in cyber world to chat with one another as you can and find out who each other are and um, anything else that strikes your fancy you know, along the way. So we're here to celebrate the goodness and wonder of God and God among us. We now continue with hymn number 388. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings from Scripture. in a dream, wanting Solomon to ask something of him. Solomon asks for wisdom, and God grants the humble, wise request. A reading from 1 Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father, David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O oh Lord, <clears throat> and now, <clears throat> excuse me, and now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to read with me a portion of Psalm 119, beginning with verse 129. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your countenance shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but When it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. When finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The past two Sundays, we have taken a journey with a couple of Jesus' parables of the kingdom of God. Paraphrasing Lutheran pastor Carla Masters, we find that in these parables, Jesus invites us to imagine. To imagine all that we will love and risk and dare as we nurture the kingdom of heaven. That is, to choose the side of Christ. Today, we get an entire group of parables extending Jesus' invitation to imagine, 
a mustard seed growing to fullness with branches on which birds can nest, yeast in the flour bringing about a leavening, treasure hidden in a field purchased with joy, the search for fine pearls selling all to acquire them, and finally the fisherman's net catching fish of every kind. So far, we have learned from Jesus' teaching that the reign of God, as he envisions it, is fully among us, doing its work often quietly, even invisibly, yet assuredly, accomplishing what God sets out for the reconciliation of all creation with itself, and we to one another. All of today's parables are consistent with that teaching. In every case, we are given a vision that contains a surprising shift from the near invisibility of the kingdom to its full grandeur and its all-embracing hospitality. They also point us away from comfortable sentimentality to a humble, sometimes dangerous, revolution born in small movements that can affect the whole of society. There are many examples throughout history, including that of the childhood dream of Solomon we heard about in 1 Kings. We are also led directly to Jesus' own crucifixion and resurrection that changed all of human history. We think, too, of Rosa Parks helping to initiate the civil rights movement by refusing to move to the back of the bus, or six-year-old Ruby Bridges breaking the color barrier at William France Elementary School in New Orleans. Such faith-filled courage is how we get glimpses all along the way as the reign of God breaks in. There is not time, and you might be glad for this, there is not time in one sermon to address all the parables Matthew presents to us today, but let's look at one. I was very tempted to go with the fishing image, fly fishing being one of my things, for those of you who may not know. But I didn't go that way. I ventured over to the yeast, leavening the dough. As with all these parables, there is more here than immediately meets the eye. First, consider this. And it is, in its way, revolutionary. God, in this parable, wait for it. God, in this parable, is a woman. That's a big deal. We also know that in that age, the woman making the dough in a household was, in fact, the one in charge. Anybody ever grow up in a house where you know that to be true? To top it all, three measures of flour is a full bushel. And if you like math, that's 128 cups. That's 16 five-pound bags. And if you add 42 cups of water or so, you've got a hundred pounds of dough, approximately, to deal with. That's a lot of dough. We get here an image of the wonder of God, the fullness of God, the beauty and power of God, to infuse the entire loaf with yeast, as in the whole world and everything in it. Yet hearing again that like the yeast, it is often hidden. Who saw it? 
or perhaps continues to refuse to see it in a Rosa Parks or a Ruby Bridges or even in Jesus himself. The promise of this parable and all the others that we can, is that we can see it if we look with eyes of wonder, even expectation. Don't despair that the dough is not yet fully risen before its time has come. Do know, through the gift of faith, to trust that the yeast is doing its work even when we're not paying attention. Here's what I mean. A woman from one of my former parishes came to me asking if she might share a dream she had the week before. In the dream, she was walking through a desert. Each time she came to a hill, upon cresting it, she found on the other side a campfire, prepared and burning. She would continue on her journey, come to another hill, venture over the top, and find another campfire. This repeated itself several times before she awoke. In our ensuing prayer and conversation, she came to see that the dream was about God, our God who is always preceding us and preparing a place for us before we ever get there, before we even know it. It was about the gift of hope, the same gift of hope to which all the parables point us. And need I remind us that hope comes from God not from our ability to bring it about. When I, as a child, would come home from school and see the large bread kneading bowl on the counter with a towel draped over it, it was exciting to come back later and see the bulge begin to appear as the towel was rising above the rim of the bowl. I didn't know anything about the chemistry of fermentation or carbon dioxide bubbles doing their thing, but I did learn with my mother's gentle admonishment to be patient and wait for what was to come. Here we are again, thy kingdom come. Just as in that dough getting ready to be baked, the kingdom is coming, God has us pray that prayer, not because we can convince God to do it. We pray the prayer knowing that it is God's intention all along to bring about the kingdom. And we want to find a way to cooperate with God in what God is doing. That's the challenging, sometimes daunting part, especially when we face resistance, the hostile stare, or even the valley of the shadow of death, as the 23rd Psalm puts it. We now come to the end of this series of parables. In every one, we are given an image of God's reign that is, in a sense, a window on Jesus himself. In everyone, whether gardening, reaping, planting seeds, buying fields, or preparing to bake bread, we find whole worlds of possibility. The immensity of God, like in these simple parables of everyday life, gets packed into the humility of humanity itself. Ours, yes, but even more, in the one born in Bethlehem. Just like in Jesus, the wonder of God emerges from humility and will continue to emerge all around us. That's God's promise in Christ. Keep looking for it. Keep praying for it. Keep 
finding ways to join in. Hmm. Does anybody smell bread baking? the church known as the Nicene. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors. And for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. The friendless and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For all bishops and other ministers both clergy and laity. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Thanksgiving for a successful surgery for Caitlin. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For James. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. 
who put their trust in you. Let us confess our sins unto God, against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Just a couple of announcements today. First is an announcement of Thanksgiving. We are so grateful that for these past few weeks, Glenn Armstrong has been among us to fill in as organist. And Glenn, um, I want to offer you words of Thanksgiving, but also <laughs> clap. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but Glenn told me this morning that he's really enjoyed himself over these weeks, and so we're, we're glad because we enjoyed you. And the reason that this is his last Sunday, at least for the foreseeable future, um, that is because uh, our new organist and choir director is going to be among us starting next Sunday. His name is Justin Wee, O-E-I, that is spelled. and. Um, we are offering thanksgiving for him. Ask that you keep him in your prayer and know that after this service and before the 1045 one on August 13, there will be a reception uh, to welcome Justin among us. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate? I mean, there always are somewhere, but I mean that you can tell me about. Yes? What is her name? Right, well, let's pray for her. Thank you. Using the prayer as you find in your leaflet. And we'll change the you to her. How's that? May the strength of God pilot her. May the power of God preserve her. May the wisdom of God instruct her. May the hand of God protect her. May the way of God direct her. May the shield of God guard her against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. May the Spirit of God bless her in the coming year. Please convey those good wishes, if you would. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Thanksgiving found on the screen or in your service leaflet. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
As you are able, please stand with me as we pray together the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.